Hello, everyone. Um, a warm welcome to CSU and to your first subject in agriculture, AHT 101. So I'm the subject convener. Uh, my name is Peter Mills, and uh, the subject coordinator for internal students is Georgie Lolf. And I'm the subject coordinator for um, the distance students. Now the subject is called Professional Skills in Agriculture and Horticulture. And there is an expectation that students start now to develop uh, professional behaviors in preparation for a career in agriculture. So for a start, um, all the lectures, the tutorials, the field walks, the field trips are all recorded. And these are mainly for the benefits of the distance students. And so that means internal students are on camera, they're on the microphone, and so professional behavior is expected. And as the lectures and tutorials are recorded, there's, expect there's the expectation that the background noise is kept to a minimum to prevent interference uh, with the recordings. So note also that uh, any questions in the internals classes um, will be repeated for the benefits of the recording for the distance and students. So bear with us. The other thing is that going on field walks and field trips, uh, students are expected to dress appropriately. So the internals will go on a couple of uh, field walks and, a, and an all day field trip. So long sleeves, long pants, jeans, uh, closed in shoes or boots, hats, caps, no offensive t-shirts, no vests, and prepare for any type of weather. It might be cold, so bring a jacket, it might be wet, uh, bring some rainwear, it might be hot and sunny, make sure um, you've covered appropriately, including with uh, sunscreen. Of course, the main purpose of the subject is to ensure that students learn about professional academic skills. So writing scientifically, uh, referencing information, uh, using the library properly and avoiding uh, plagiarism. But so I'm Peter Mills, I'm the subject convener. Uh, for both cohorts, for the internals and for the distance. And I'm also the subject coordinator for uh, the distance students. So distance students will correspond with me. Um, and these are my contact details. Now I have an open door policy. You can contact me anytime um, by email or by phone. We prefer you to use the discussion forum, um, because if you ask a question, there's usually another student thinking the same question, and therefore all students benefit from that uh, correspondence. So try to use the discussion forum. Um, if it's a private matter, then by all means use the phone uh, or the email. Georgie Love is the subject coordinator for the internal students. And uh, these are her contact details um, for the internal students uh, to correspond uh, with Georgie. Obviously, they will have face-to-face -face classes with Georgie and have the opportunity to discuss any issues with Georgie in class or in tutorials. Um, but Georgie is a farmer. She's not based in Wagga. She's based a few hours out of Wagga. And so she's only on campus uh, for one or two days a week. You'll be able to find her in uh, building 286, room 117. Um, and if she's not there, if you go to room 119 and talk to Lisa Drum, and uh, she can pass on any messages or receive any forms um, that are necessary. All right, so it is an introductory subject uh, for all first year students in agriculture, across all courses in agriculture but it focuses on professional academic skills, so academic literacy, professional behavior, management skills. And these are all embedded in the contents of the introduction to 
agriculture. These are learning outcomes. I'm not going to read through them. You'll find them in the subject outline. But the focus is on skills and academic learning um, with uh, a look at some agricultural industries. Uh, we'll look at environmental, social, and economic sustainability. And we'll look at climate, meteorology, social, and environmental uh, factors. So what is it all about? What's the big picture? Really, the subject is more about academic skills. So most of you who are school leavers will have uh, come out of school where um, you probably still quite up to speed with some of the academic skills, whereas there are a lot of mature age students who haven't been to school for quite a while, haven't studied for ages, um, particularly in the distance cohort, and they might need to relearn uh, those academic skills. Right. So having said that, it doesn't mean that if you're a school leader, you, you can rest on your laurels. Um, just bear in mind that academic writing standards at university are much more sophisticated than what was learned at school. So in addition, many of you, especially the internals, come from farms or from farming backgrounds or are from farming areas. So you'll be familiar with some of the agricultural content. However, bear in mind that uh, many students, particularly the distance students, live in, in, in cities. Um, they don't come from farms. They haven't been exposed to agriculture. And so we will be catering for all backgrounds in academic skills and in agricultural skills. So we are looking at everyone with all or no experiences and with all or little interest in certain areas. And you have to bear with us um, while we do that. Right, so we've got two big classes. Uh, we've got 146 in the distance cohort. We've got 103 um, in the internal cohort. And um, numbers have actually doubled in the last uh, uh, two years, which is very encouraging. Now for the internal students, you can find your timetable at uh, this particular link. Uh, and if you go to that link, you'll uh, find uh, for AHT 101, this display, um, everything takes place on Tuesdays. Um, each Tuesday, there is a lecture from um, eight until nine, and then an interactive tutorial from nine until 10. And then there are four tutorials. You only have to attend one of the tutorials. And um, there's a sign-up facility for tutorials in, for the internal uh, students tutorials in the student portal. Uh, most students have some kind of clashes um, with other subjects and have to choose a tutorial to avoid uh, those clashes. So most internal students are signed up um, here's just a few left uh, to fill the gaps. Um, distance students um, will have different types of tutorials, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Instead, on Wednesday evenings, we have online meetings uh, from seven until eight, and uh, where we cover the materials or the aspects that the internals have covered during their tutorial in that particular week. Right, so just to re-emphasize, from nine until 10, there's a lecture and an interactive tutorial focusing on one of the modules from the uh, subject. And then there are four tutorials. You only have to attend one of those and they are two hours each. And the times and venues are displayed on the slide um, and if you go to the timetable you'll see them there as well. Now on Tuesday the 26th of April all day the whole class will be going on one of two uh, field trips and I'll talk about that shortly. Just bear in mind that uh, for distance students um, everything is recorded, the lectures, the interactive tutorials, the tutorials, um, the field trips, the field walks, everything is recorded 
and it's embedded already in uh, the modules. So internal students, just uh, make sure there's not too much noise um, so that it doesn't interfere with the recordings for uh, the distance students. Right. So for the internal students, you'll have to fill in some medical forms and some good behavior forms um, to be allowed on the trip. Um, what internal students will also have to do is sign up for Q fever tests and vaccinations. Um, and uh, if you're a distance student and you're going to be coming on campus uh, for residential schools for other subjects, um, it's probably a good idea to get uh, a Q fever test and if necessary, get vaccinated, um, which is a topical subject at the moment. All right, so just bear in mind for all the field trips, field walks, appropriate clothing and footwear are required. Um, there are three field walks, environments, crop and sheep handling. And those are on the 24th, 20, sorry, 29th of March, 10th and 17th of May. And then um, there are two field trips. The internal class will be divided into two. Half will go to Batlow to look at apples and wine. And the other half will go to Leeton to look at rice and cotton. And they are recorded for the benefits of the distance students. Now for on-campus students, we do have um, Q fever tests and vaccinations. These are tentative dates. Um, they will be confirmed uh, with our students later. Right, so what we normally do at this stage is that we just pause, hand out this little picture of uh, a tree with some characters in and around the tree. And we just ask you to study it and have a look and uh, decide where do you sit now. Put a circle around that character and put today's date. Then go back in three weeks' time, look at the characters again, circle the character that fits you in three weeks' time, put the date, do it again in, in six, in nine, and in 12 weeks at the end of the semester, and just see if you've made um, any uh, progress. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to the Interact site and uh, run you through what's on the Interact site. Um, this is a list of everything that is on the Interact site. Um, there is a uh, home page, which is the welcome page. There's also some weekly instructions for the distance students. Uh, Georgie does something slightly different for the internals. Uh, but the principles are the same. What should you be doing each week? Um, there is a tab for announcements. Any announcements we send out will go to you in the email. Sometimes they come out, the formatting comes out a little higgledy piggledy in the email. Um, if that happens, go to the announcements tab and read the announcement on the Interact site. Uh, there are several discussion forums, one of which is where we want you to introduce yourselves um, before we start. Uh, so do that as soon as you possibly can. And then there are the other discussion forums. Uh, each has its own title and purpose, and uh, you can post your questions uh, there. The most important document on the site is the uh, subject outline. And uh, it's a contract between you, the student, and uh, the university. What you'll also find, and this is the learning content, are the uh, there are academic skills tutorials, there's a writing and science uh, module, and then there are the study guide modules, which are the agricultural content. There's also a folder called resources, where there's some additional stuff placed. And uh, there's also a tab called uh, Panopto CSU uh, Replay. And uh, that's where we keep all uh, the recordings. You don't really have to go there uh, because we embed the recordings in the uh, uh, modules. The other really important um, folder on the Interact site 
is the assignment instructions uh, folder. So whenever you're ready to do an assignment, you've got to read the instructions in the subject outline, then you need to go to the assignment instructions folder. So let's have a look at the Interact site. Right. So when you land on the site, you'll land on the welcome page. There's an introductory video on the um, distance site. It's slightly different for the internals, uh, but the basic principles are the same. There are some assessment item dates and a little bit of extra information. Also a link where you can go and download Microsoft Office 365. Right. <clears throat> Now for the distance students, each week there are some weekly instructions. So there's a little video um, with some written instructions uh, next to the video. And uh, while you're learning the Interact site, uh, what we've done is we've put the links in um, and they will take you to the links in these uh, um, links in the main menu. So each week a set of instructions will go up. Um, now, if you're one of those students who uh, likes to keep ahead, what we've added in is a subject timeline. And this gives the weekly instructions for all the weeks for the semester, um, what you need to do, what you need to study, what are the week's activities, what are the assessment items uh, that need to be addressed in that particular week. So if you're one of those fly in, fly out uh, type workers and you work in blocks, um, this schedule is there for you. Now, we've also put that schedule um, into a rather colorful uh, Excel file, which we've converted to PDF. You can't read it here, but basically um, the light blue is the module topic that we are covering. Um, the yellow are the ac academic skills, uh, tutorials uh, that we deal with, and uh, the um, uh, the orange one is the uh, uh, interactive tutorial, what will be covered there. Um, the pink is uh, your own self-activity, and uh, the last two columns deal with the assessment items. It's a good idea to print this out onto an A3 page and put it onto your notice board uh, in your office. Ignore evaluation for the time being. Um, we'll deal with that much later on. So the learning content is made up of academic skills, tutorials, and modules. And each week, we will tell you which academic skills tutorial to do and which module to do. So if we go to the academic skills tutorials tab, there's a little bit of an introduction. And there are five academic skills tutorials, um, one of which is a library tutorial. The others are academic writing skills. Now, each has a little introduction. It has a recorded video, and any materials that are shared in the video are provided at the end of the module. Uh, the library tutorial is slightly different. It's done by different staff um, who obviously have their own style. But again, there's a video. There are some um, additional materials where you can uh, click on and explore more about uh, the library. So each week, you're going to have to do uh, one of these academic skills tutorials. Now, what has also been provided by the academic skills people is this writing in science module. And everything that is covered in the academic skills tutorials um, appears here. And this is a repository for all of that information. So if you want to learn how to do referencing or how to put numbers into assignments or how to do tables and figures in assignments, you can just come to this a repository instead of scrolling through uh, academic skills tutorials um, under this tab. The modules are the agricultural content of the subject. So agricultural systems, meteorology, environmental resources, etc. etc. And let's just have a look at one. At the beginning of each module, there are some learning outcomes explaining uh, what's coming. There are a number of ways to, to navigate. You can click on the uh, arrow on the right-hand side of the page, or you can open the menu on the left-hand side and click to where you actually want to go. Now, 
you can minimize it um, or you can uh, half close it um, or you can open it fully right the next part of the module is the module resources and in each case every module has been converted to a pdf format of all the content of the module in addition to that any powerpoints that are used in the recorded lectures are provided here and then there are recordings of the lecture which is the one usually the one hour lecture there are recordings of the field walks of the interactive tutorials um, and uh, and anything else that might have been delivered in the subject. In some cases, we have visiting uh, lecturers or we have students from other countries um, talking about their agricultural systems in their own countries. So anything that is delivered to the internal students is kept in this part of the module. The rest of the module is the notes, what's in the, uh, what's in the module. And if we go right down to the very end, um, there are some uh, sample review questions. There's some multiple choice questions. You can click to launch, uh, begin, and you can test your learning by doing these uh, little tests. At the end of the modules also are some sample review questions. And we've also provided some suggested answers for those sample review questions. So you can test your learning um, by going through the multiple choice questions at the end and the sample review questions and answers at the end. And at the end of every module, there are some references. <clears throat> now, CSU Replay is a repository for all of the recordings for the, uh, for the subject. And uh, each week as a lecture and an interactive tutorial um, is recorded, um, it will be placed in here, but it will also be embedded in the modules. So you don't need to go uh, to the CSU replay uh, folder uh, because they are embedded in the modules or in the academic skills tutorials uh, as appropriate. In the resources folder, there um, at this stage, there's only an introduction and welcome letter um, on the internal site, um, which is already on uh, the uh, uh, welcome page. All right. Readings and resources. Uh, the library puts together um, all our readings, resources, um, and they are placed in this folder. You don't really need to use that because, again, um, in the modules, there are links uh, to those uh, readings. Then there's the learning community. These are the contact details uh, for the staff. Any announcements are made or stored here. Um, there are a number of discussion forums where you can introduce yourself and ask questions. Um, for the distance students, there's an online meeting tab. Um, read all the instructions here and right at the very bottom, what to do, how to set up your own Zoom account. And then once you've done that to uh, enter the meeting, you can click on the online meeting uh, tab here and that will take you into the meeting, which as I said earlier, is on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Sydney time every week. All right, there is a uh, folder called degree sites and it lists all the degrees uh, or the students who are enrolled in the subject. You can only enter the degree in which you are enrolled. So you can click on these, but it won't let you into the site. You can only enter the site of your enrolled uh, degree. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in the subject outline are some basic instructions for assignments, but in the assessment instructions folder, there are more detailed instructions. So for example, um, there, this is an essay. It provides you some detailed instructions and it also provides you with some additional materials that you will need to be able to write that assignment. Um, the first one is the BKSB test. Again, an explanation of what is BKSB. There are a couple of links um, as to what do the BKSB levels mean. Um, and if you wanna contact uh, someone you can go to the learning resources 
um, link or you can email the BKSB guys uh, directly. Right. We've also provided you with some screenshots as to what it all looks like, to, just to show you how to navigate through BKSB. Right. So that's the assessment instructions folder. There is a test center and assessment item three, which is a library quiz. There's a link there to uh, do that test online. East is where you submit any assignments that are written assignments. Uh, My grades is where you um, see your marks. East is also where we return your marked assignments. So it's very important that once your assignment is marked, you go back into East, retrieve the marked assignment, read the feedback and take on board that feedback um, for your next assignment. Studiosity is a CSU facility where you can get help with your assignment before you submit it for marking. So you can do a draft for your assignment. You can submit it to Studiosity. Uh, someone will have a look at it and give you some feedback. Now, they're going to give you feedback from an academic skills perspective, not from an agricultural content perspective. So they are academic skills experts and they will give you feedback about the structure of your essay, your paragraph structure, your referencing, uh, etc. cetera. Um, they won't be able to comment on anything technical from an agricultural perspective. And then Turnitin is a tool that we use at the university to check for plagiarism. Now we use it in two ways. Students can use the student form to submit their assignment just to check their assignment um, doesn't have a high similarity report and then make adjustments before submitting it for marking. Once it's submitted for marking, then the staff then use Turnitin to put all the assignments through to check for plagiarism. So just make sure that you take heed of what is uh, taught in the academic skills tutorials about putting things into your own words because all assignments will go through Turnitin. And then there's some additional support uh, stuff um, that uh, you can have a look at. Right, so let's go back to our PowerPoint. Now, there is a um, prescribed text. You don't have to buy it. There are copies in the library. But because it's out of print at the moment, um, the author is telling us that they're going to be updating it soon, um, it's been made available as an ebook. And each chapter has been copied and made available uh, for students. And um, we have put links to uh, those readings in the, uh, in the modules. Right. So this is the schedule of what needs to be done each week. This has been copied straight out of the subject outline. And you can get an idea of uh, what's coming up uh, each week by looking at this uh, schedule. Or you can go to the nice colorful ones um, that we put up in the schedule tab on the Interact site. There's one for the internals, there's one for the distance uh, students. So what are the expectations? At the end of the day, it's been proven through research that if you come to class, you have a better chance of passing uh, your subjects. So the expectation is that you turn up for lectures, you turn up for tutorials, you turn up for field walks. The expectation is 100%. Of course, some of you will miss uh, some of them. Um, the important thing is that the materials are placed online and you can catch up from the materials that are placed online. What is compulsory for internals is the field trip. And a register will be taken. If you don't attend the field trip, you will fail the subject. For distance students, um, the expectation is that they attend the online meetings. If you can't attend the online meetings, then watch uh, the recordings. And of course, there will be recordings of the lectures, the tutorials, the field walks, as well as the online meeting tutorials that uh, we have on Wednesday evenings. So just a reminder of the professional skills um, in ag and hort. Um, we take videos of the teaching, they're recorded. Um, there's some recording etiquette. So we do ask uh, internal students 
for professional behavior, um, including going on uh, the field trips, suitable dress, I've already talked about that, and uh, using the professional academic skills that you learn um, as we go through the academic skills tutorials. Right. So these are the topics of the modules um, that I showed a little earlier. I'm not gonna go through them one by one, but I will explain here that there are four discipline topics, broadacre, horticulture, livestock, and viticulture and wine topics. Our students only have to study two of those. The internal students will have internal delivery for broadacre and livestock, because the majority of the students are either doing the BABM or the Ag Science degree, and those are the topics that they will cover. The distance students are also made up of BABM and Ag Science students, but they're also a lot of wine, viticulture, wine business, and horticulture students. And they have a choice. If you're a BABM or Ag Science student, then study the broadacre and livestock. If you're a hort student or a vit, a uh, wine science student, then study the horticulture and viticulture and wine industries. And of course, everyone needs to study uh, the last module, which is management in agriculture. So these are the assessment items um, that uh, how they appear in the subject outline for both internal and distance students. There's six assignments. It shows when they are due, when your um, marked assignment is due back to you. And it also shows the mark um, that has been allocated. So two of them are online quizzes. Um, you have to score a minimum standard in each of those to be able to get a satisfactory uh, mark. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to demonstrate uh, with a little Excel exercise about workload throughout the semester. All right. So what I have done is I have gone to the subject outline, the four subjects. I'm working with the BABM students here because they seem to be in the majority. And I've just copied and pasted this table of assessment items into an Excel spreadsheet. I've tidied it up a little bit. So in this case here, AHT 101, which is our subject, and the other subjects that um, the BABM students do. And in each case, I've uh, recorded the dates that the assignments are due. Now, in some of them, it says to be advised or it says not returned. So I've consulted with uh, the lecturers and found out um, when those uh, assignments are due and uh, due back to uh, the students. Now, this is an exercise done on last year's assignments expectation is that you do this exercise yourself um, so you can get a good idea of when your assignments are due. So what I then did is tidied it up and formatted it it's a little bit and then I added a little bit of color to distinguish um, the subjects. The next thing that I did was I uh, then ordered it. So I went to data, I went to sort, unclicked my data has uh, headers and then I sorted it by column E and you can see there is column E. Right. So I have done that for you already. And here they are in order of the dates that they are actually due. So the two really important things to notice or to note, or three important things to note from here. One is that there are assignments due in week one. All right. So we can't sit back on our haunches and say, well, look, I'll get started in next week because if you miss an assignment, you fail the subject, right? So assignments uh, starts in week one. And then there is a steady load of assignments all the way through the semester. That's the second point. The third point is that if you have a good look uh, towards the end of the semester, more than half the marks allocated to all four subjects that the BABM students will be doing are due in the last week of the semester or in the exam period. Right. So what that means is students can't leave the workload until the end and cram and swap for exams where there are exams 
or work on assignments um, at the last minute. It's very important that students work uh, regularly and consistently throughout the semester. Right, so that's our little Excel uh, exercise. Now, what do you have to do to pass the subject? The first thing is that you have to complete all the assignments. You cannot miss an assignment. If you miss an assignment, you will fail the subject. So all assignments. For the internal students, the internal students also have to attend uh, the field trip and a register will be taken. And then to pass the subject, you've got to get an overall mark of uh, 50%. Now you can get less than 50 for one assignment and you can get more than 50 for another assignment. As long as you get an average of 50 overall, then you will pass the subject. So there's no minimum pass requirement for individual assignments. Right. Now, in some cases, students might require extensions. Right. So have a look at the subject outline. There's some rules and regulations about uh, extensions there. But just to summarize it, if it's a very short one, a day or two, just contact the subject coordinator, must do it in writing. You should do it prior to the submission date. You need to provide the reasons and where you can provide a certificate. So for example, a doctor's certificate. If something more disastrous has happened and you need a longer extension, then you need to fill out what's known as a special consideration. So this is like a misadventure or extenuating circumstances. And of course, in the past, we've had bushfires and floods, uh, farms have been flooded, uh, internet has gone down. So students have uh, had some difficulty in continuing with their studies and doing assignments. Right. In that case, it has to go through the process called special consideration. It will go through several staff in the university before reaching the subject coordinator and the subject coordinator has a final say. What are the expectations in terms of how much work should you put into uh, the subject? Now, the university recommends that each subject per semester requires about 160 hours of work. So that's the equivalent of 12 hours per subject, per week. Right? And if you're a full-time student or if you're doing four subjects, that's 48 hours a week. And that is uh, attending lectures or tutorials if you're an internal or watching the lectures, watching the tutorials if you're a distance. Uh, attending the field walks, or watching the recordings of the field walks and field trips. Studying the online materials and writing your assignments. So let's put that into figures. Now, these are um, guesstimates that have been put together by uh, staff. And uh, for internals, it's pretty straightforward. There's two hours of lectures. There's two hours of tutorial each week. So there's 24 and 24 because there's uh, 12 weeks of face-to-face -face time. Studying the materials online, about 50 odd hours and doing assignments about uh, 50 odd hours as well. And that's pretty similar for distance students, except they do most of their learning um, themselves. So watching the recordings, uh, working through the materials, and uh, there are also online tutorials, um, one a week for an hour. And uh, it's a good idea that uh, distance students attend those. And again, about 56 hours uh, for uh, working on assignments. Now let's break that down. Some of them are uh, pretty simple um, and not so time consuming assignments, such as the BKSB uh, test and the library quiz. And you probably only need two, three, four hours uh, to do each of those assignments. Um, the second assignment is a short essay. You'll need about three or four hours to do that assignment. Assignment four is a big assignment. So you've got lots of reading to do. You've got lots of summarizing to do, writing, um, putting things into APA referencing style, um, searching for additional resources, and that's gonna take you anything between 10 and 20 hours to complete that assignment. The last two assignments are also essay assignments. One is a little shorter than the last, and um, the expectation is that 
anything between five and 10 or uh, eight and 15 hours uh, to do those assignments. So researching them, finding the right references, uh, making your own notes, writing it all out, uh, or typing it all out, um, then polishing it, polishing it, fixing the format into the APA format in terms of referencing, paragraph structure, um, etc. All right. So how can you best learn in any particular subject? So what we recommend is that you take three bites at the cherry. What do we mean by that? What we suggest that students do is read all the materials before coming to the lecture or before watching the recording of the lecture or the tutorial. Right. Then attend the lecture, take notes, or watch the lecture or watch the tutorial and make your own notes. And then review. Right. And so the suggestion is, I can't draw it on this particular PowerPoint, but the suggestion is, is that you really should review after 24 hours, after one week, after one month, after three months. I mean, that's the end of the semester. If you've got a subject that carries on for the whole year, then review again after six months and then at the year end where um, you need to refresh yourself uh, with, uh, with content. So if you follow this format, three bites of the cherry, including review, 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 you will be able to retain a whole lot more information. And how we've helped you with review is at the end of every module, we've got review questions. So if you go through those review questions, that will help you um, retain the information uh, much better. If you don't review, you're likely only to recall about 25% of uh, material, long-term, maybe less than 10%. But if you do this uh, three bites of the cherry and the review process, um, you are going to retain more than 75% of uh, the material. All right. So just a reminder that the lectures are recorded, the tutorials are recorded, the field walks and visits are recorded for the benefits of the distance students, but also for the benefits of the internals if they miss something or if they want to review something. All right. Um, and these are uh, placed on the Interact site. They are embedded in the modules, either in the agricultural modules or in the academic skills tutorials. And, uh, but if you get lost, um, you can go and find what you're looking for in this uh, CSU Replay Panopto uh, folder, which is a repository. Um, but it's not something that you really need to visit on a regular basis because as I said, they're embedded in the modules. All right, so just a reminder of what was said earlier, rules um, in class, on-field visits, on-field walks, no mobiles, other electronic devices um, being used other than for taking photographs um, or recording um, what's actually going on. So keep talking to a minimum so that there's no background interference, background noise. Bear in mind you're on camera. Um, and the recordings go up online for all to see. Uh, the usual rules of uh, when you're in venues is no eating, drinking, or smoking. Same applies for field visits and uh, field trips. Dress appropriately. Um, if you're in class and you want to ask a question, raise your hand, let the lecturer uh, uh, finish what they're doing, allow you to ask uh, the question, at which case the lecturer will probably repeat the question for the benefit of the recording and then give um, an answer to the question. All right, field walk apparel, closed in shoes, protective clothing, jeans, shirts, uh, boots, hats, jackets, uh, bring some documents uh, to record notes. Um, you can bring your mobile phones, but use them only as cameras, please. And uh, You'll have to sign a form uh, that you'll be jolly good fellows uh, on those trips, as well as a medical form, just in case there is an emergency. There is another um, tab on the on the uh, Interact site, which I pointed out earlier, the degree sites. Um, it's an Interact site, much like your subject site, uh, but it deals mainly with jobs, careers, 
um, there are announcements about activities, for example, conferences coming up, and it also advertises uh, scholarships. So visit it on a regular basis. All right, so um, what should you do um, in the first week, work through the first module, um, which is an introduction to the subject. Um, there's a very nice farm facts presentation uh, from 2012, which gives you a good overview of agriculture. Um, it also talks about the learning opportunities, formal and informal, um, that you can make use of. It talks about active reading, and it also shows you where you can actually uh, find help. All right. So what should you do in week one? You should really start working on um, uh, the first assignment, which is the BKSP test. Um, it's due uh, this week, or rather Monday, um, in the second week. And we've deliberately done that so that students can have the weekend to work on assignments and Monday to polish them or finish them off if they haven't uh, finished them by Monday. And then they are due on uh, Monday night at midnight. So do the BKSB test now and start getting cracking with the uh, second assessment item, which is the academic writing assignment, which is due in the next week. And that's due on the 14th of March again at midnight. And to be able to know what to do and how to do it all, you've got to read everything on your Interact site. You've got to read the subject outline. You've got to go to the assessment instructions tab and look through the writing and science uh, module. So for all assignments, these are the musts. Go to the subject outline, read the task, understand the rationale, uh, look at the marking criteria, which is the marking rubric, because that's how they are marked. Look at any presentation requirements or any other requirements. And these are all listed in the subject outline. Then you go to the assessment instructions tab, which is on the Interact 2 site, and you read the additional instructions there. Now, if you're doing an essay type assignment, uh, you can pick up ideas and help uh, looking through the writing in science uh, module. But in actual fact, all of that material is covered in the tutorials, either in the academic skills tutorials, which are delivered live to the internal students, or there are recordings for the distance students, or for the distance students where they are discussed um, specifically with respect to assignments in the online meetings. So, subject outline, assessment instructions tab, and the tutorials are where you need to go to be able to uh, do a good assignment. Right, here's some additional help. If you're a little rusty on terminology in agriculture, we provided a glossary of agricultural uh, terms and uh, you can go to that link and, uh, and uh, hone up on your skills there. There's a link to the academic skills team if you need help with academic skills. If you wanna send your assignment for checking before submitting it for marking. Um, you can get some assignment feedback before you do that. And there's a link uh, for that. There's also a link uh, for how to do referencing. And if you really are stuck, you can uh, call Student Central um, and there's their telephone number, or you can send them an email, which is askcsu at csu.edu.au. Um, but all of this is actually embedded in the modules and in the academic skills uh, tutorials. Right. So for assessment item two, we'll say it again, go to the subject outline, go to the assessment instructions tab, look through the writing and science uh, module and uh, study the tutorials that have been completed um, to date. All right. So for this week, um, If you're watching this recording, well, you've already achieved uh, the first part. Uh, have a look at the academic skills tutorial, the first one. Read the subject outline if you haven't already done it. Read the announcements if you haven't already read them. 
go through the PowerPoint and the module uh, immediately after watching this recording. And uh, if you need to, you can review the CSU uh, replay recording either in the Panopto folder or embedded in uh, the module. Go to the dis discussion forum, ask any questions, but specifically introduce yourself. Uh, for internal students, you've been allocated to a field trip. So go to the field trip allocations tab and see which field trip you're going on. For the tutorials and field walks, um, there is a sign up uh, tool in the student portal. And as I said earlier, most students have already signed up to the tutorials. All right, so do the first assignment. Uh, in future, bring your laptop to lectures and tutorials. And uh, for internals, sign up for uh, Q fever testing and vaccination if necessary. All right. So if you would like to, you can watch this uh, amusing uh, YouTube uh, video by just clicking on the link. And uh, all that's left for me to say is good luck with your studies and just make sure that you keep up with the uh, schedule or the uh, um, weekly instructions if you're a distance student. Good luck. <laughs>